This is an endurance test and review of the Vitoman Jump 1800 solar generator. The Jump 1800 is a large capacity but still portable system that can provide off-grid solar power around the clock. Note, I do not receive any commissions for sales of this unit and it was provided by Vitoman for evaluation. The battery technology used is lithium iron phosphate or LIFEPO4 which has good cycle life and is a safe chemistry. It stores about 1.5 kilowatt hours of energy, which makes it useful for power outages and so forth. The inverter output is rated at 1800 watts with normal loads, but Vitoman states it can also power loads up to 3600 watts if they are resistive, meaning not inductive, such as an air conditioner. There are plenty of connectivity options, including three AC outlets, three 12 volt DC outputs, and six USB ports. For charging, there are a couple of 2.1 by 5.5 millimeter input sockets. Charging can be done by solar panels, car adapter, or an AC power brick. I will be focusing on only the solar charging aspect, so I will be using four 12 volt 100 watt solar panels, two series, two parallel, for this test. I started with some preliminary testing to make sure all the basic functions were working properly. Now for an endurance test to see how the unit performs under longer term stressful conditions. The test is designed to simulate a power outage or similar condition. To start the first part of the test I will run the following loads. A table lamp, a 5000 BTU window air conditioner, camera lighting, shop dust filter, LED floodlight, 18 and 40 volt power tool battery chargers, at least four cell phones and USB devices, and a small vacuum cleaner, and probably a few other devices as well. Okay, what I'm doing first is testing the low light performance of the charge controller inside, and as you can see, it's only showing one watt, and it's pulling the voltage down to about 30 volts. It's at least trying to produce power. The conditions are very early morning and there's almost no power available, if any. This shows that the MPPT charge controller inside the unit is competently uh, programmed and it seems to be working well. I've seen a lot of these units, they just fall apart when the sun is kind of dim. This one is trying really hard to make power even though it's almost no sun at all. So I'll go ahead and show you what the panels look like. And there's what the panels look like. They're not going to be producing much power with the top halves all shaded like that. But it's at least trying, and it's not giving up. Today I'm going to let it charge up to nearly 100% or 100% if possible, and then I will start the test. The Vitoman Jump 1800 is now basically full uh, to 99%, but essentially it's full and it's getting 190 watts of solar power charging it. All right, first thing I'm gonna do is power on the AC inverter. Okay, there's the AC inverter, and I'm gonna go ahead and plug in some lights so I can see what I'm doing. I'll be right back. I have some lights plugged in, and I'm gonna go ahead and power on my air conditioner and the DC outputs and start testing the inverter. So I have a 5000 B2 air conditioner right there. And I'm just going to go ahead and plug that in and let it run off of this machine uh, to help stress it and see what happens. All right, the cord is plugged into the AC. There it is going down there. Let's go ahead and give it a start and see what happens. Okay, what you're seeing here is not the actual usage of the air conditioner. It's doing the math, so it's subtracting the solar power input from that. Current loads that I'm running include my camera lighting, a table lamp, and the air conditioner. I'm now going to plug in some additional items to further load the systems and make sure they're performing correctly. We can start with a USB battery charger, so let's go ahead and plug that in. I'm going to turn on the USB power. Okay, the USB is on. Charger is turned on. The air conditioner is going to be a little bit loud, but that's the price you pay for a test like this. You got to run a lot of stuff. I'm going to plug in my battery charger, Ryobi 18 volt charger, and I'm going to turn on the 12 volt DC output. Okay, I'll get a battery for that. All right, let's get that charging. Now we're going to get some 18650s to go in there, and I'm going to plug in this power bank, which needs to be charged. And there's plenty of USB ports on this thing. They did not uh, skimp on the USB ports at all. 
it's charging. Let's plug in the phones. Okay, those are starting to charge. The display indicates 317 watts discharge and it will last 4.4 hours at this state. 18650 is charging up now off of the USB output and my two phones are charging. Power bank is charging. And we have the Ryobi battery charging. And we're running the air conditioner. We're looking at about 334 watts on the display, 97%, 4.2 hours. I'm pushing this Vitamin Jump 1800 somewhat. It's getting quite a workout, but I want to push it a bit harder because it has an 1800 watt inverter. So let's try adding a little bit more. As you can hear, the fans just kicked on, and I would say this has some of the strongest fans I've ever seen on any portable power station or solar generator that I've ever tested, and I have about 40 of them. This General Electric dehumidifier is quite a machine. In fact, it's more powerful than the 5000 BTU air conditioner. It's of course a compressor-based system, and so it has quite an inductive surge. What I'm going to do is plug that in and see if the Jump 1800 can run all this stuff and that. We'll see. Now for the big test, let's go ahead and plug in the GE dehumidifier and see what happens. Alright, let's turn it on. And the compressor did not kick in just yet, so we have to wait. 387 watts. Uh, it does have a delay start, so it takes a while before that happens. That was a really hard load for it to start, and it made a very strange sound, so it had a very difficult time starting it. However, it does start it uh, when the air conditioner is not running. So let's try starting the dehumidifier first, and then firing up the air conditioner. Of course, this test is ridiculous, and it's a little bit too much, but I'm going to try it anyway, just to push the inverter and see if it's any good or not. So the 5000 BTU air conditioner, it starts that like a boss. However, this dehumidifier does challenge the inverter and it's very hard for it to start. But it does start. At this time, I'm running the dehumidifier and the 5000 BTU air conditioner, plus I'm doing all these other things as well. I will admit that this test is a little bit crazy. This thing is just a little too big, especially when you're running an air conditioner. The only purpose of this dehumidifier is to push the inverter very hard with an inductive load on top of the air conditioner. Okay, so let's check the display. I'm going to back away so it's not so noisy. We had one casualty so far. The CFL bulb in that lamp just blew up when that thing started. So that's not good. Um, really that's the result of pushing a high frequency inverter really hard. So when that thing kicked on there, for some reason, perhaps it caused a voltage spike or something, and the CFL bulb that was in there burned out. Um, it is what it is. It is able to run the air conditioner, and it's able to run the dehumidifier. This is an extreme test, and I wouldn't really recommend pushing it that hard. But I went ahead and pushed it to see what happens, and now we know what happens. So probably shouldn't try to run two inductive loads on this unit. Not a good idea. Okay, we're pushing about 865 watts. Let's go ahead and unplug the solar and see what happens. Okay. Nine hundred sixty-nine watts. interesting behavior. So it seems to go up first before it goes down. And there's the solar panel voltage, 35 volts. Back down to 870 watts. So it's subtracting the solar panel charging from the inverter and output. 
still running the test, still running a dehumidifier, still running the window air conditioner. Actually, I forgot to put something to catch the water out of the dehumidifier. Still pushing about 800 watts. Plenty of battery capacity left, so I should be able to run this test for a while. Batteries are charging. This power bank doesn't need to be charged anymore. However, what I will do is plug in this USB-C soldering iron to see what happens. Alright, there it goes heating up. Well, apparently it has no issue running a USB-C soldering iron. No problem whatsoever while running all of this. So that's good. Right now I'm running the dehumidifier, but I don't plan to run that all day because honestly there's really no point. It's not necessarily a reasonable test to run this dehumidifier and the air conditioner, but it is reasonable to try to push the electronic systems in this Vitam and Jump 1800 to see if there are any flaws that I can expose. So far, I did expose that it has some issues with line regulation when the unit is trying to run two inductive loads. However, I'm not surprised. It's really asking too much to run this gigantic thing while also running the air conditioner. Just to be clear, they're both running right now. However, when I tried to run the air conditioner and then start this thing, so I had to start the compressor, what happened is the CFL bulb in that lamp immediately blew up. That is not a good sign. So what is the conclusion? If you're going to push a high frequency inverter that hard, don't plug sensitive electronics like computers into it. Otherwise you might lose them. Something to keep in mind. The input jacks are a couple of 2.1 millimeter plugs. Normally 2.1 millimeter plugs are not rated for very many amps. I will say these are all metal and they look very strong. However, I wouldn't put more than 10 amps in. For that reason, because of the 2.1 millimeter jacks, I recommend you keep your current as low as possible and your voltage high. What does that mean? It means to put your solar panels in series and get the voltage up and the current down. Here I'm running about 30 volts and that's the minimum I would recommend for the input. Now of course this does come with a 12 volt car charger and that's why it says 12 volts to 60 volts. But on this channel I mainly focus on the solar aspect, so I'm just testing that right now. And I'm using four solar panels outside. And this plug is getting a little bit warm around it, but it's really not that bad. Well, the performance is impressive so far, but I'm wondering if I can push it just a little bit farther. I'm going to see if I can run that small vacuum cleaner for a few minutes while all this is running. That's still on, the compressor's engaged, and of course the air conditioner's on. All that other stuff over there is also still running. Let's give it a try. Well, yes, it ran the vacuum cleaner just fine. It's a small vacuum cleaner, but it certainly did run it. So that's three inductive loads running at the same time. That's a good enough test. I've disconnected the dehumidifier and moved that away. I'm still charging my batteries. The cell phones are charged. And now I'm just running a table lamp, and I'm running camera lighting, which I'll soon turn off for a while, as well as the window air conditioner. Basically, I'm going to leave this air conditioner running and I'm going to turn the lights off for now and I'm just going to do an endurance test, a long-term test on this to see how it handles a longer test of multiple hours and of course multiple days. Well I ran this test for several days back to back and that's generally how I like to do these kinds of tests. It's an endurance test. It's supposed to be stressful and the workshop that I'm running the Vitamin Jump 1800 in is really not cool. It's pretty warm and it gets warmer throughout the day because the air conditioner really can't necessarily keep up with the heating load on the building. During that time I did allow the battery to cycle and I kept the solar panels plugged in and of course the battery percentage went up and down and the loads were turned on and off. The unit has incredibly good cooling and very powerful fans so I don't think it's going to overheat 
and during the rest of the test I really could not expose any fault or flaw. It just worked like it should and it did what it's supposed to do. So what do I think about the Vitamin Jump 1800 overall? First, the main concern I had was the 2.1mm input jacks for solar charging. It's hard to imagine 300 watts of solar power going into such a small DC socket, but the input jacks must be of reasonable quality. When charging with my makeshift MC4 to 2.1x5.5mm plug adapter, the plug only got warm. I put my solar panels in series to get the voltage up to around 30 volts while reducing the current flowing. So while I was concerned about it, it really didn't turn out to be that big of a problem. As far as I know, there is no MC4 to 2.1mm adapter cord included with the unit, but if you're going to be charging with solar, make sure you use a really good quality 2.1mm plug and cable. Now Vitamin does offer a folding solar panel option and includes the cable. You can see a picture of it right there. One end has MC4 and the other end has the 2.1mm plug. So if you're going to make your own cable, just make sure you use very good high quality wire and a good high quality plug so that it doesn't get too hot. Now during the testing, the CFL bulb I had in the table lamp plugged into the inverter output actually blew up while the unit was starting the dehumidifier while also simultaneously running the 5000B2 air conditioner and a whole bunch of other stuff plugged in as well. I didn't have an oscilloscope or any data logging attached, so I can't say for sure what happened. Anyway, I was probably pushing the high frequency inverter circuit a bit too hard. That said, the inverter did not shut down, it did not generate an error message, and it was able to start and run up to three inductive loads at the same time while running a bunch of other stuff too. That is a pretty extreme test, but it survived. I'm not going to blame the unit for blowing up a CFL bolt, however I think it's interesting and it is part of the test and so I think it needs to be included. In general, I think the Jump 1800 brings to the table a significant capability even for those who just want some mobile or backup power. It has a lot of USB ports, the inverter is pretty strong, and the display is clear and the controls are simple to use. The integrated LED light is a nice touch. The fact that it can charge from solar panels while all outputs, including the AC inverter, stay active gets a thumbs up from me. With the fans inside being so powerful, I don't think there's any chance of it overheating even after extended periods of use. Please note I don't accept commissions for sales from reviews. If you'd like to purchase the Vitamin Jump 1800, a product link is in the description. Also, Vitamin will be offering discounts to customers during their Members Day promotional event from June 20 to July 10, 2024. Be sure to check them out if you're interested. I want to say thanks to Vitamin for providing this sample unit for the review. I look forward to using it to power my workshop and it will probably appear in later videos. Thanks for watching and hope to see you next time.